Welcome back to our third segment, Learning the Word. We're going to get into Revelation, into our study. Have you got your Bible? You know, God's love for us is so great that he, the price he paid shows us that he's not anxious to condemn us or to throw us into hell or to uh, get rid of us. <laughs> you know, what he did for us is what I would do for my kids. As someone you love so much that you can't live without them. And I want you to think about that real hard that, you know, you may not feel worthy of being loved. You may not, you may not feel that you're loved, but your feelings are irrelevant. You will feel loved if you have the knowledge of what he's done for you. And we've just scratched the surface on what he's done. I mean, whew, if you understand what Jesus did for you, you will never be the same again. Never again. You will have hope for the future. I, I, I don't want to cry. Ugh. That's the spirit. That's how the spirit it just can overwhelm you and you cry because it the it's just so profound but i believe him when someone lays down their life for you and you refuse to believe that they love you you need slapped okay sorry but <laughs> you do <laughs> that's proof he didn't just say he loves us he came and proved it and wrap that around your mind and accept that you may not know why he loves you, but he does. You have to accept that he does or else you don't believe him. And I believe him, don't you? Let's get into our, into our study. We're in Revelation. We, we did chapter six on Friday, but I'd like to reiterate. Let's move backwards a little bit to verse 12. And let's look over the sixth seal one more time here. Okay. Now in chapter six, verse 12, we're going to go through the series of events here to expect with the sixth seal. Now, if our, if our research is correct, then the sixth seal would open July 27th, 2018, just six days after the temple is defiled. And it's actually God's response to the defiling of the temple where the Lord descends from heaven with a shout from the third heaven into the second heaven. And then a war takes place in heaven for about six weeks or so. And during that time, we'll see great signs in our skies and things happening out there in space with this war. This is a real war between good and evil out there. The Lord descends from the third heaven to the second heaven, this war takes place. Satan and his one-third are cast down to the earth in this seal. And then the Lord arrives in our atmosphere at the last Trump Feast of Trumpets, September 2018, about six weeks after um, the, the blood moon and the seal being opened. And that's what it looks like right now. Um, the sixth seal is, it, since the sixth seal would open like July 27th at that blood moon and our evacuation wouldn't be until September, we are very likely to see these sixth seal events, okay, many of them. And they will manifest over a period of time after it opens, but we may see some of these events. Let's look at verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake. Now, this is either a pole shift or something, but it's a global quake. Because we see down here in verse 14 that every mountain and island are moved out of their places. Now, that's not an earthquake. That's not a quake of knowledge, okay? <laughs> that's not a global quake of understanding <laughs> or or spiritual enlightenment all right this is like a shake the entire world to where all the mountain every mountain and island is moved out of its place kind of quake 
And it may be our pole shift that they've been saying is, is coming right here in this sixth seal. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And the moon became as blood. Now there's our blood moon that indicates when to expect the sixth seal to open. In verse 13, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Now the stars are, the angels are referred to as stars in the scriptures in several places. And so what this is saying is that this, in verse 13, this is where Satan and his one third are cast down. The stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together. Have you seen those roll clouds? Those are amazing, amazing. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men, rich men, chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. He's saying everybody's hiding underground. Well, I was asking uh, some of the questions I ask myself when I study these things. I'm like, well, a uh, after a global quake, the last thing you want to do is be underground, right? Imagine the aftershocks and stuff. But they are hiding underground for a reason. Everybody's underground. They're hiding for a reason. Now, I don't, it, it, it could be that it, people are scared to death um, of these events and, and the things that are happening. Um, but there is a point where they see Jesus and it's right here. And they said to the mountains and the rocks fall on us. How scared do you have to be to beg a mountain to fall on you and crush you to death? <laughs> Think about it. He said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Now, they can see his face. They can see him sitting on his throne, whether that's with the satellite or if they can see him in the sky with binoculars. I don't know. But it says they can see his face. Hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Now, this tells us right here that the wrath has arrived. In verse 17, for the great day of his wrath is come. So see, the first half is not, is not God's wrath. The second half is God's wrath, and that's what we escape. The great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Whoa. Do you guys have any questions in the chat room? I'll come over here. Um, hi, Brian. <laughs> Glad to have you here, brother. Hi, Cher. You doing all right? It's always 9-11 when I look at the clock. <laughs> I love you too, Brian. Glory to the king. Okay, let's go straight on into chapter 7. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Can you imagine what would happen when there is no, when the winds are restrained and there is no wind, everything will stagnate and the stench of the sea as creatures die and things like that is just going to be hideous and with no wind to blow it away. Ooh, ooh, it's just going to be terrible. Now, um, and I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God. Now, this is, uh, this is a mark where God marks his own servants. Now, uh, this is not the same as the mark of the beast. See, the mark of the beast is a counterfeit of the mark of God, actually. So they may even call it the mark of God. Who knows what they'll call it. But it says here, um, um, where is it? 
Okay, let's let's take a look at it. I saw another angel descend, ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Now, these angels have come to finish the earth off. Okay, man has destroyed it already with Fukushima, Daiichi, and it's killing us all. Science says that we're all going to be dead in 10 years. Well... That would coincide with why Jesus is coming now, wouldn't it? That's why, because, you know, we know that there are people still on the earth during the millennium. But if Jesus doesn't show up, the entire human race is going to be extinct in 10 years. Okay? Now, they can't stop it. it the radiation leakage from Fukushima has poured unregulated into the Pacific ever since 2011. For five years, it's been pouring in the Pacific, and it's going into the air, and it's traveling around the world. They say it, the entire planet will be irradiated, and everything is going to die, even bacteria. But Jesus is going to show up, and he's going to intervene, okay, and everything's going to be okay. In verse 3, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So see, there's a mark of God in the, in the servant's foreheads. Now, that's not the same as the mark of the beast in the forehead or the right hand. That's the counterfeit, the mark of the beast. Now, it, you're not, to get the mark of the beast, you're going to have to go wait in line for it, and somebody's going to inject you or whatever. But the mark of God is sealed upon the servants of God by angels, Angels actually do it. You don't go wait in line anywhere. An angel comes to you if you're one of these 144,000 and puts the mark on you, the mark of God, which is going to protect you. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now, I know there's a lot of people who believe that the 144,000 are Mormons or Jehovah Witnesses or whatever, but no, they're not. This tells us exactly who the 144,000 are. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben, these are the sons of Jacob. You have Abraham, his son Isaac, and Isaac's sons were Jacob and Esau. Esau was the tear, okay? Jacob was the one who God chose to pass the promises down through. And these are the children of Jacob. Twelve sons of Jacob are the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, um, so of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Now Judah is the, the tribe where the Lord Jesus descended. Reuben was actually Jacob's firstborn. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Verse 6. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Naphtali... Uh, na Naphtali was a, as the way I've seen it, but Nephthalim were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manassas were sealed 12,000. Now Manassas was the firstborn of Joseph. He had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And when Dan was disinherited, the tribe of Dan, uh, his the Manasseh took his place. And so we have a tribe of Manasseh now. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. And see, Manasseh is technically Joseph's son. So the tribe of Joseph was continued by his son Ephraim. And then Manasseh got his own tribe, descended from Joseph. Um, the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, this is us, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Now, that's us. We're going to have white robes, and we'll have palms in our hands. 
and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Now this shows us when our evacuation takes place. The church is not seen in heaven until this point. So we know that we go after the sixth seal is opened. I mean, how can Jesus come and evacuate us if he hasn't come yet? <laughs> okay. Uh, he's coming at the sixth seal and then evacuates us right after that. Now, um, we are given white robes and have palms in our hands. The sixth seal is also described in Matthew 24, starting at verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, the tribulation of those days, that's first half. Shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven. See, that's our sixth seal description, isn't it? And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now, the powers of the heavens, not the heavens are shaken, the powers of the heavens. That's Satan's foothold, his authority in the second heaven. The powers of the heavens are shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Now, I don't know what that is. Maybe it'll be a big luminous cross or or maybe it'll just be, a, you know, him appearing in the sky with power and great glory on a cloud. Who knows? I'm anxious to see that and see what he's talking about here, though, aren't you? Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. You hear that? Tribes. He's talking about Israel, too. <laughs> not just the rest of the world. Israel's not going anywhere. Okay? Literal Israel, the nation of Israel, the Jews. They're not going anywhere unless they have trusted in Jesus prior to this point. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And here's our evacuation right here. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Well, that's an interesting verse. I could, uh, I see some, <laughs> uh, some more things in it that are really cool because what he's saying, why did I was thinking, why didn't he say he will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the earth to the other? He's saying he gathers his elect from one end of heaven to the other. Well, we got a couple of possibilities here. One is that he has he has those who have already died, their bodies rest in the earth, you know, absent from the body, present with the Lord. So they're with the Lord. They're alive, well, and conscious. Okay? And they are gathered and brought back with Jesus and then put back into their bodies and then their bodies are resurrected. So they come back and they're reunited with their bodies. I think it also has another mean, has another meaning here. Um, where was I? Oh, I think also, also what it's saying is that those who, well, if you die between now and September 2018, uh, you'll be back. Because the dead in Christ rise first, okay? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we be with the Lord. Now, if you notice... The angels gather his elect. It's not like all of a sudden you're just going to go shoot up through your roof and you're, uh, <laughs> you know, or something like that. It says the angels shall gather his elect. You don't just lose your sense of gravity and fly up into the sky. You are gathered, which means an angel is going to appear before you and hold out his hand to escort you. You can't fly, okay? 
They can. You can't. You have to be holding on to their hand. Uh, but see, it says they shall, the angels are going to be gathering his elect from the four winds of heaven. But the other thing I was going to tell you I thought that this could mean is not only the dead in Christ gathered, okay, but it's a possibility that the Lord has a plan and he's conducting maybe a similar thing that he's doing here on the earth on other planets with other populations. It's possible. It's, you know, because our numbers are incredible in heaven. It, it says right there in Revelation at the beginning, right here, I think it's 7, 9. I've lost my spot in here, 7. Uh, after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number. Now, see, we know that our there's a lot of us, but a multitude which no man could number. Now, that could include, you know, the saints all the way back to when the Lord left. All of them are going to rise at the same time. And so it's not just those who are here now. The saints who have died all the way back. They are all going to be reunited with their bodies and resurrected. And that's a huge number. And then the numbers of those that are alive and remain when these things happen. But if you, if you die before, before then, uh, don't sweat it. Consider it a vacation because you're going to be back <laughs> September 2018. Okay? You're not going to be gone very long. You'll be in heaven, what, uh, you know, five minutes or less <laughs> on that scale, you know, with 41 years for every 41 years of pass here, an hour, uh, as only an hour has passed where God is. So you're only going to be there just a few minutes and then you come right back. So, so don't be worrying about it. If you have to, if it is God's will for you, uh, to be rescued before some of these really terrible things happen. And I'll tell you the truth. Uh, for quite a while now, I have felt like it. those who die are those who kind of get lucky, you know, uh, those who die in, die in these days right here ahead of these really terrible events. They're, uh, they're actually kind of getting out of here by the skin of their teeth, and, and they're not going to have to go through those things. So that's a blessing for them. But they will be back. Nobody's going to miss the rapture, okay? Uh, I spoke to a wonderful brother who told me he was told as, as a kid that he was going to be, experience the rapture. And I said, yes, that's a pretty safe, <laughs> that's a pretty safe thing to say uh, because it, whether you live or die, you're going to be back on that day. Now, um, let's get back over here. Now, it's possible that God is doing the same thing he's doing here on other planets somewhere else, too. And so these numbers may also include them, you know, if he's got other things going than just on the earth. It'd be kind of arrogant for us to believe that we're the only ones in the entire universe uh, that God has any care for. And so it's possible now, it says here in verse 11, And all the angels stood round about, a th around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God. You know, he is wonderful. He is worthy. He is glorious and amazing. Saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might. Be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? Now that's us. He says, And whence came thee? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Oh, we'll start there again on our study tomorrow at verse 14. God bless you guys. I love you. Do right and risk the consequences. And should the Lord tarry, we'll see you tomorrow here, there, or in the air.